So one of the main issues of being an app developer is that if you don't use a Mac, then you'll have problems developing for iOS. This is because Apple only has an emulator, or as they call them, a simulator for iOS available on Mac. You need Xcode, which is the, let's say, the Android Studio for iOS to be installed. And because that is only available for Mac OS, then uh, if you are using either Windows, Linux, whatever, you're not going to be able to install it, which is bull crap, but hey, it's Apple, so what can you expect? So over the past two days, I've been trying to crack through this issue, and I believe I found the best solution available if you don't want to spend a thousand dollars on a new Mac or if you don't want to pay an absurd amount of money for the Apple developer account so that if you are developing with Expo, for example, you are able to deploy it over the cloud. But even then, you'll need an iPhone and, well, I don't want to pay for an iPhone, I don't want to pay for a Mac, so let's do it. I'm Sim Coder, and this is how we develop for iOS without a Mac. So the first step that you have to do, if you haven't figured it out yet, is to install a VM which will run Mac OS. So I'll leave two links down below for two great websites that have detailed the steps that you need to take in order to install a VM which runs Mac OS. Be sure to read each and every single point with attention because if you fail one point, then everything is over. So one important thing that you'll need to know before starting is that it is easier to do this on a Linux environment. I did it in Manjaro as it is my favorite distro at the moment, but you can do it in basically any other distro and you'll need some hardware requirements. Keep in mind, this doesn't always work for all machines, so you might be just unlucky. But if your machine works, uh, especially if the graphics card is compatible, if the CPU is compatible, all of that, make sure you have at least eight gigs of RAM available and that you have around 70 gigs of storage to spare to dedicate to uh, the VM. This is especially important because Xcode, which is the program that you'll need to install in order to get an iOS emulator, is a really big file. So yeah, you'll need a lot of storage dedicated to it. So uh, before you actually start the process, uh, make sure uh, in these points, uh, you change the RAM from two and up it to six. And when you create the disk, make sure you allocate 70 gigs to it. Uh, this way you make sure uh, you won't run into any problems later on. Okay, so the next hurdle that you have to go through is how to install Xcode. As I've said, Xcode is the equivalent to Android Studio for any other normal uh, programmer. So if you build an app with Swift, for example, you'll run Xcode. And because Xcode comes packaged with uh, an emulator, uh, just like Android Studio does, then we'll need to install it. However, if you go into the App Store you'll, and you try to install Xcode from there, you'll see that an error pops up. You'll need version 11 or later in order to install Xcode. However, we uh, installed the version 10.15, I believe, which is Catalina. And because of that, we must find a way to uh, get around it. And we installed Catalina because Big Sur, which is the latest version of Mac OS, is not available, uh, at least in an easy to install way from all the websites that I uh, told you about earlier. So we must go with Catalina. In order to install an earlier version of Xcode, you'll need to go to the website called xcodereleases.com. And in there, you'll have to find the version 12.4 and install it. So the download will start, take some time off, go grab a cup of coffee because it is 11 gigs uh, total. So yeah, it will take some time. After that, just unzip it, install it, and you are done. Now all that's left is to run the simulator, which is actually the iOS device and the thing that we need in order to develop. So for that, go to the spotlight search, which is the magnifying glass in the top right corner, and type in simulator. Run it, and uh, an emulator will appear running iOS, which is awesome, and we are almost done. However, I quickly found out that by running a VM, uh, there is a big issue. Uh, everything is slow. So uh, to write codes, it isn't that good. Uh, the keyboard doesn't correspond to the keyboard that I have because Mac keyboards are a bit different from the normal keyboards. And well, everything was just laggy. It wasn't comfortable to type code in. So after that, what I did was install VS Code. And even if you don't use VS Code, I strongly advise you to use it for this specific case. The reason being, you'll be able to use an extension created by Microsoft 
called LiveShare. LiveShare is an extension that allows you to type code into other VS Code. So for example, if I'm here, I can type code in a machine that's all the way around the world. And this is useful for obvious reasons, especially right now with the pandemic, because you'll be able to co-work uh, alongside another uh, colleague of yours. And uh, because of that, it has gained a lot of traction. We'll actually share our own VS Code with the VS Code that's in the Mac OS. And that way, we'll be able to just run the emulator on the Mac OS. And then if we get out of the VM environment, we just have to do Control Alt G for that. And you'll be able to move through uh, your Linux environment, for example. Then you'll be able to write code on the VS Code that's on Linux, which will work flawlessly as always and it will automatically uh, appear on macOS. And it is basically the same thing as typing on the macOS. However, you don't have all the lag associated with it. One other cool thing is that you can also share the terminal. So if you know your way around Linux commands, and because they are the same as in macOS and Linux, obviously, then you'll be able to not touch the VM, the macOS VM at all because, well, you type the code, you write the commands. If you have to deploy it in Expo, for example, you can do everything in your Linux environment and it will automatically appear in the uh, Mac OS VM. So you basically have to run an emulator to run another emulator, but yeah, that's the only way of doing it. But with LiveShare, it, everything becomes easier and uh, you lose all of the lag that comes with uh, running a VM, especially uh, the VM running macOS, because a lot of VMs tend to, to run flawlessly, especially when it comes to Linux, Ubuntu, and Debian, Mint, I never had this issue. But with macOS, it doesn't run all that great, especially when we combine that with the, the fact that the keyboard layout is completely different and to set it up is a completely uh, maniac process. So uh, by doing this, you'll be able to not spend a thousand dollars either on a Mac or on an iPhone and you are able to develop for iOS. Easy enough. If you like this video, then please do let me know by giving the video a like. And if you want to see more, then please do subscribe and I will release more and more videos like this. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope to see you again tomorrow. Ciao!